heard it now. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone. We're so excited to be here for Thursday. Th oh, I can't even speak. Thursday, Thursday. Um, in case you lost track of what day it is, um, I'm Amanda Puck with Mariano's, and Sarah's here with me as well. And we're going to help uh, you guys moderate through tonight. Um, we decided that through this crucial time of social distancing and sheltering in place, we really wanted to be there for our customers um, who are looking for tips on cooking, mixing drinks. Uh, we have wine classes. We do live music on Friday nights on our Facebook Live. And Saturday, we also have concerts for the kids that we heard uh, being so cute earlier. So we have a lot of great things for everyone to do during this time while you're sheltering in place. Um, we're really excited tonight to have Jillian Murphy. Um, actually, she lives in Chicago, so we're so happy to have her here tonight um, on behalf of Telemore Do. And she's going to be teaching us some great spins on drinks. And um, like she said, we're going to learn three tonight, um, not just two. So I hope you're all ready to mix up and, and post pics. Um, we love getting pictures uh, from you guys on everything that you've been making. Um, just a reminder that you need to be 21 and over. Um, please be kind in the comments. There's a chat button in the middle of the screen, like right under where my finger is. So you can ask Jillian questions. She um, is ready to answer anything that you might have regarding uh, Telemore Do, uh, the drinks she's making tonight or just, or just mixing in general. And uh, just remember to be kind because this is a new platform for us and we're really here in a positive way for all of our customers at this time. Um, there's also a video function on the lower left corner where my, other, where my finger is. Um, and if you don't wanna be recorded, let's turn that off. Um, so you won't be made famous on Mariano's YouTube because we're going to be hopefully posting all of these videos soon so they're available all the time to customers. So I'll let Jillian take it away because she has three drinks to make. Um, and Brian, Sarah will post uh, the, the ingredients in the chat because we've been doing that throughout the class. So um, I think we're ready to get started. Wonderful. Thank you for the introduction, Amanda. And of course, thank you to everybody for dialing in on this gloomy Thursday evening in Chicago. I'm right there with you, not enjoying the weather. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Gillian Murphy, and I'm the East Region USA Brand Ambassador for Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey. Um, so we're going to mix up three cocktails this evening. We're going to do a whiskey sour, and Elevenses, which is a bit of a tongue twister, and a Gold Rush. I'll go through them nice and slowly throughout the evening, and as Amanda said, pop any questions that you might have into the chat box. If I don't see it straight away, someone will shout it out to me. Um, so let's start by talking about the star of the show, I suppose, which is the Tullamore Dew, the Irish whiskey. And I can see that some of you guys have bottles of that at home, so thank you very much, first and foremost, for going out there and buying the Tullamore Dew and participating. Um, now, what I like to start, when I'm talking about Tullamore Dew, I like to surprise people with two facts that a lot of people don't know. The first is that Tullamore, the first name in our name, the first word in our name, is a town. It's bang smack in the middle of Ireland. It's in County Offaly. So if you were to stick your thumb into Ireland, you would find the town of Tullamore. It's in Offaly. Secondly, the D-E-W here, that's not the dew in the grass in the morning. That's got little punctuation marks between it, if you look carefully. And it stands for the initials of a man, Daniel Edmund Williams. Now, Daniel joined our distillery, our Tullamore distillery, when he was 14 years old. And by the time he was 25, he became distillery manager. And um, don't worry, we no longer hire 14-year-olds, 16-year-olds uh, are former productive. Um, but he did make quite a name for himself in distilling in an Irish whiskey. And if you've got the bottle at home, you can see that his, um, his name is on the neck here, and there's a picture of him on the side too. So it's a fact that often surprises people, but it's all right there in the label. Um, that's a little bit about our story, and we've been around for a very long time. We've been around since 1829, distilled in Ireland, um, and not going anywhere. And the US is one of our biggest markets, the second biggest in fact. So I think that's all down to people like you, enjoying the drinks at home. Um, we'll talk a, bit about a, a little bit about the liquid. It's a blend. It's a blend of all three styles of Irish whiskey. So we've got grain whiskey, which looks like that, it's corn or mace. We've got malted whiskey in there, malted barley. And we've got pot still whiskey in there, which is that really spicy, buttery, creamy style of whiskey. Blend of all three styles. It's also triple distilled, so it's exceptionally smooth, very easy to drink. You see a lot of people sipping a shot of Tullamore Dew along with their beer. That's because it's so easy to drink. It's buttery smooth, delicious. And it's also triple cask matured. 
it's matured in X Tullam X Bourbon, and um, refilled sherry casks. So triple distilled, triple blend, and triple cask matured. So that's a little bit about our story, and I guess more importantly is what does it taste like? So if you're at home and you want to taste it neat, that's great if you've got it. And if not, I'll just tell you what it tastes like, and you can imagine. Close your eyes and listen to me. So to me, the first thing I get when I bring this to my nose, and I suppose I should put this in a glass, is fresh green apple. I get bright, light apple. It really comes through. Now, if you don't smell it the first time, don't be afraid to bring it back to your nose, waft it around. You might get that alcohol burn sensation first, but do bring it to your nose and have a little sip. And a fun fact when you're tasting whiskey is to open your mouth a little bit and um, you'll actually taste it a bit better. Close your eyes, open your mouth, and your sense is really unlocked that way. Give it a little sip. To me, the second I taste this, I can taste all three elements of our blend. I can taste the spice of the pot still on the tip of my tongue. I can taste the sweetness of the malt kind of on the middle. And then in the finish, I get that fruitiness from the grain. So it's got a great blend of all three. Amanda, if I have any questions? I never would have known apple like until you said it, but it does have that really crisp apple on the nose and it does, it does have apple flavor to it. And a really simple cocktail to pair with this is just the juice of a freshly pressed green apple into two ounces of Tullamore Dew is the most delicious and simple drink. And I guess slightly healthier than <laughs> mixing it with some sugary ingredients. Um, Amanda, if any questions are popping up in the chat, just shout them out to me because I can't see it. It's a bit too far away from my screen. Ryan wants to know it's okay. it's okay if he sneaks a shot before we start mixing. I, I think your answer would be... I think it would be rude not to. Um, and it's very usual in Ireland to do a cheers and a toast when we have a drink. So we'll start us off. Uh, if you all raise your glass, if you have one, if not, you can just join in and listen. We'll do a little toast. So there are tall ships and small ships and ships that sail the sea, but the best ships are friendships and friends will always be. Salancha, cheers. Oh, Salancha, Zoom friends, I love it. Yeah, I love this. The only way we're making friends anytime soon, I guess. All right, guys. Well, let's start off with our first cocktail of the evening. So the first one I'm going to make is the whiskey sour. So I know there was two recipe lists that went around, but all you're going to need for this one is the Tullamore Dew. You're going to need an egg, some lemon juice, some simple syrup, and bitters. So if you have those, join in with me. I'll take it nice and slow. <laughs> So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my glass with ice here. I had it filled a little bit earlier, just so I have it chilling. Now I'm not going to drink this ice, but we want to have our glass nice and cold. It's always great to have a nice, chilled, refreshing cocktail. So we want to make sure the drink is as cold as possible for the guests. Um, and then I'm going to fill my shaker with ice. Okay, so I'm going to be measuring this evening using ounces. If you don't have a measuring jug or a jigger at home, a teaspoon is half an ounce. So you can use four teaspoons and that will make two ounces. And if you have a measure, I'm going to do two ounces of Tullamore Dew. Straight into the shaker. And if I was working in a bar, my bar manager would kill me because you're supposed to put the alcohol in last as it's the most expensive ingredient. So if you spoil your drink, you can dump the cheap ingredients because you haven't put your whiskey in yet. But I'm not at the bar, I'm at home, so. <laughs> I won't be following those rules. Okay, so we've got two ounces of Tullamore Dew in the shaker. The next thing we're going to do is 0 0.75 or three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. So fresh pressed is really best with lemon juice. And when we're making the whiskey sour, we want to get it right because we're going to be putting raw egg in here. And we want to make sure that the citrus from the lemon cooks the egg. Okay, so, so far we've got two ounces of toy, we've got three quarters of an ounce of lemon, and we're going to also put three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup in here. There's 86 people on here right now. Um, and simple syrup is just a mixture of sugar and water. Um, and I've done one-to-one -one ratio, which means equal parts of sugar and water. Um, you can put it on a stove if you want the if you want the sugar to dissolve into the um, into the water quicker. If not, just use some boiling water from your kettle. And I have a question. 
Yeah, um, you're like, I used my uh, hand uh, squeezer before, um, the, before we started tonight. How much juice does one lemon usually give? Probably around half an ounce. Okay. So it's not much, it is labor intensive, but I think it makes a massive difference squeezing from fresh versus the store-bought on the shelf stuff. I think fresh is always best for cocktails. Now, if you're in a pickle and you're at home and you don't have any lemons, that's absolutely fine. Go for the juice in the bottle, but stick to fresh, especially for entertaining, I think. Not that any of us are right now. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's fine. <laughs> exactly. And um, the final ingredient is an egg white. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Of course, being careful that I don't get any shell in there. Straight in. Um, if you have an egg allergy or you're vegan, you can substitute this for chickpea water. That's been like a hot topic on all of these classes, even with um, Trevor and um, Seb in the last couple of weeks that I, I actually just heard about it within, within the last month about chickpea water. I think that's super interesting. Yeah, and many, many bars have started to carry it now for that reason. And also it doesn't go off like um, uh, egg white. <laughs> it's not as powerful. All right, so give that a nice shake. So shake that really, really well. You're going to want to make sure that the egg has interacted with the lemon in there. So shake anywhere up to a minute. Um, can you use egg white from a carton? Yeah, you can. That's perfectly fine. Um, just make sure that you're following the measurements on the side and that you're just putting in the white of one egg, whatever the equivalent is. But yeah, that's fine. Jillian, can you, you, we talked about this one other time. I don't know if it would work. Can you use like, egg white from the carton? Yeah. You can, you totally can. Um, just make sure that you're following instructions and that you're just putting in the white from one egg, but that's fine to do. Um, and a good point on that is I would only make these one at a time in the shaker. So for many, many cocktails, you're fine to double or triple up the recipe to make more. For the whiskey sour, just because there's fresh egg in there, I think it's safer to do it one at a time. And also this is gonna have a lovely consistency when I pour it. So. I've dumped out the ice out of my chilled glass and I'm getting a strainer over my shaker and I'm going to pour it straight into the glass. And it should come out cloudy, but it's going to settle. And there's an age old thing that if you get your whiskey sour and it's separated already, it's been made for too long. So you should never accept a whiskey sour that already has the separation. You should um, send it back. <laughs> Now, final ingredient is the Angostura bitters. So these are both for taste and for decoration. If you have a bottle at home, give it a sniff. It's got this really savory um, herbal kind of smell to it and that definitely translates to the taste too. But what you can do for this is add a couple of drip drops along the top in a straight line. And then I take a knife or the back of a bar spoon or something flat and I'm gonna run it through the little dots and they're gonna turn into love hearts. See if I can show it to you guys. All right, I'll bring it up to the camera. Oh, I don't know if you can see it, but um, <laughs> you'll have to imagine. You can see the nice separation there. Just using my laptop camera. So that is the whiskey sour, guys. So cheers to anybody that made that one. Cheers. Slauncha. This is one I definitely want to have a sip of. One of my favorite drinks. I love it too, and I love it any time of year. I, I used to really like them in the summertime, but I just, I love the sour, I love that sour flavor, that combo. Yeah, and I think people are sometimes fearful to add the bitters or they're not sure what it's for. This really elevates your cocktail. And by adding that little design on top, I think if you're hosting anyone or even making it for yourself, you may as well make it really presentable, really pretty. Because um, you meet with your eyes first and then your mouth, I think. So it's nice to have it looking well. It looks great. Um, do you have a recommendation as a substitute for bitters or is it, is it the bitters or nothing? Um, there are some homemade kind of herbs and spices that you can pull together to make bitters. It's really just easier to buy a bottle. Um, and if you don't have it, don't worry. 
what I, I would I would buy it. There's many brands out there, and the brand is unimportant. I like this one, Angostura. I'm pretty sure you got this up, Mariano's. Um, I like this brand, but as I said. So do you? So you don't like stir them in? Uh, Cathal Humphreys wanted to know. We don't. You don't stir them in. It's more of like a decoration for the top. It's not. Yeah. Now you. So again, kind of up to you. I personally don't. I like to put them on the top. I think when I bring it to sip, my nose kind of smells it, and I like that sensation. I don't like it too strong, bitter tasting, for want of a better word. But you can definitely add some dashes in there if you wish. Um, and if you are buying bitters for your home, you can make it with an old fashioned using just bitters, sugar, and tolamore juice. So right, you can Missy can George is already enjoying hers. Can I, can I spotlight you, Missy? Is that okay? You're like one of my favorites. How did, it, how did it turn out? Oh, wait, I still have you on mute. Hold on, it's my fault. Let me, uh, or maybe you're on mute. Oh, there yes. we go. How did it come out? Good, I might have used a little too much lemon. All right. But no, really good. You can probably put more simple syrup in it or something. To sweeten it up. Up a bit. There you go. It's like baking. You're just balancing the ingredients. All right. I love it. Who else um, made one? I, we've seen a bunch of people mixing. Let me go back to my gallery view. Up, I see Samantha. Oh, wait. I see it. Hold on. I'm going to spotlight you. Oh, <laughs> I love that look. Oh. Good. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Slancha. <laughs> Blancha. All right, this is awesome. All right, we're gonna get to everybody before the end because we I know everyone's doing other other stuff. Um, but this is great. Does anyone have questions for Jillian so far? Just like the basic whiskey sour recipe. I feel like it's a good proportion and the egg white. So what if people don't want to use egg white? Is that still okay? Yeah, that's fine. And in a lot of bars, you won't have them put in fresh egg purely because people can be fearful of it. If you're not making a lot of whiskey, or yeah, whiskey sours, you don't want to be buying a whole load of eggs in. So in a lot of bars, they'll just do the lemon juice, the simple syrup and the whiskey. And that's fine too. The egg is actually purely for texture. It doesn't do much to the taste of the drink. Um, but you do get that delicious foaminess on top and it's got a lovely mouthfeel. So I like to add it in. Um, if you want that foaminess, that texture, go with the chickpea water. And if you're not bothered, you can leave it out. All right, cool. All Perfect. right, I think we're ready for the next one. All right, let's move on to the 11s then, which is the tongue twister of the day. So this is a really great breakfast cocktail. If you're not a fan of coffee, but you do drink tea, this is the drink for you. I love, this is a good pick me up. It's a good brunch drink. I love this one. So I mentioned tea. The tea I'm using is a Farry's tea. Sorry, there's a light above me, which is putting a little shine. See if I can bring it up here. It's Barry's Irish breakfast tea. Um, and you can get this in Mariano's in the foreign people aisle, as I like to call it. My aisle, where I spend all my time. <laughs> um, it is, I think it's the British section I get it in. And it is from Cork. I saw someone saying that, which is where I'm from. So I do like to support my local town back in Ireland. So what I've done is I've brewed some strong Barry's tea in here. Yeah, this is the 11s that we're making. If you don't have Barry's tea or you don't have another Irish breakfast tea, that's fine. Use a black tea, um, English breakfast tea works well. If you have Lipton, that's gonna work too. This is just my preference. Um, but what you do want to do is make sure that you have got the tea nice and strongly brewed. We're not going to use a lot of the tea in here, so we want it to be really, really concentrated. So that's the main thing to remember. Um, all right, we'll start with putting the tea in our shaker then. I'm going to do 1.75 ounces of strongly brewed tea. So an ounce and three quarters of strongly brewed tea. Into my shaker. Okay, next we're going to go back to our lemon juice. Three quarters, sorry, with ice. Yeah, I've got ice in here. Should have mentioned that. Don't worry, you can have it in if it's not in already. Ice. All right, so we've got our ice in there. We've got our 1.75 of tea in there. And we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. 0.75 ounces of lemon juice. Straight in there. Next up, I'm going to put in two bar spoons, which is about two, about one generous tablespoon, I would say, of raspberry jam or raspberry preserves. 
If you've only got fresh berries at home, you can put in a handful of fresh berries and add in some simple syrup to dial up the sweetness. Um, and again, this is your cocktail. So if you like really, really fruity drinks, if you like it a little bit sweeter, add in another little bit. Totally up to you. All right, and now last but not least, we're gonna put the Tullamore Dew in there. Two ounces of Tullamore Dew. Right in there. All right, guys, so to recap, we've got two ounces of Tullamore Dew, a heaped um, bar spoon of raspberry jam or raspberry preserves, whatever you've got, 1.75 ounces of strongly brewed tea, 0.75 ounces of lemon juice. All right, now for the fun part, we're gonna shake. So ice in the shaker also, and give it a shake, shake, shake. All right, so when you've shaken it for about 30 seconds, I ran out of ice, sorry. <laughs> so this time we're okay to ice our glass. Um, yeah, once it's cold in your hands, you can stop shaking. So this time we're okay to ice our glass afterwards because we're gonna serve it on top of ice. The whiskey sour didn't have any ice in the glass. So we wanted to make sure that the glass was cold. This time we're gonna be pouring straight onto ice. Um, so the teaspoon measurements, one teaspoon equates half an ounce, typically. So if you're doing two ounces, use four teaspoons. Or sorry, tablespoons, tablespoons. All right, so I'm gonna strain this. Um, it's important to strain this one because it's got the raspberry seeds in there or the strawberry seeds. So pouring it out. My shaker's got a strainer on top, which is super handy for this one. If not, you can just use a little fine strainer from your kitchen, that works. All right, mine came out nice and red. Um, and just for a little bit of extra pizzazz, I'm gonna add a lemon twist to the, to the top for a garnish. So, gonna peel my lemon. I wanna make sure that there's some of the pith in my lemon, some of that white bit. Um, and I'm gonna trim it. Trim off the sides to get those raggedy bits away. Now this is the fun part. I've got some of the pith in there and that's got some of the essential oils from the lemon in it. And I'm going to pinch it in half like this and waft it over my glass. And I'm gonna spray out some of these essential oils. So I peeled a bit of lemon, bit of the pith in there, squirt it in half over your lemon and you'll actually see those oils fly out. And again, for making cocktails, it's all those little details that makes the big difference. So when you're giving this to the person who's drinking it, they're gonna get that aroma, that fresh aroma right into their nose. Now, I like to put this on top as a garnish and I'm gonna just twist it, twist my fingers around like that, which is why I trimmed up the edges and rest it right on top. Oh, wow. Like that. I don't know if you can see that. Cheers, guys. Launch it. They look great. This is so exciting. They, they all look good. It's such a pretty color. Mmm, tastes good too. How does yours taste? Cheers. Wow, it's delicious. I was worried it wouldn't be sweet enough because I didn't use uh, jam. I used um, frozen raspberries, but I put a little bit of simple syrup in it. It's perfect. And the tea gives it like a really good flavor. Yeah. And you get that little caffeine kick from the tea. <laughs> it's nice. But it's still very fruity. You're right. This is a perfect um, brunch cocktail or something you would have, you know, like in the daytime if you're on vacation. Exactly. <laughs> you can make this one without any. <laughs> First thing in the morning. You can make this one without any fruit, any jam, any raspberries, um, and just put in um, about an ounce of simple syrup will probably make a good cocktail. So if you want to leave out the fruit altogether, and then it kind of just tastes like a spiked iced tea. 
Oh, I spotlighted somebody who has like the perfect cup with the drink in it. I see it. It looks great. It looks gorgeous. Hi guys, cheers. It looks great. Oh, Jillian's looks good. Everyone looks so good. This is awesome. I'm just enjoying mine here. Did any more questions pop up? No, but I think there's so someone, uh, Patricia is in Cork. Oh, brilliant. My neighbor, that's where I'm from. That's where oh, I'm originally you from. So. Do, you, do you know her? I don't think so. Okay. I might. Do I know you, Patricia? <laughs> nice. Well, I don't know if you're in Cork or if you're here in Chicago. Right here. Wait, hold on. I'm going to get her. Hold on. I got. I found her. Oh, hello, Lacey from Dublin. Oh, hi. How are you? Hi, I'm in Cork. Oh, great. Well, thank you for dialing in so late. <laughs> I think this is our first like global participant from Ariano's. Thank you so much for doing this. This is awesome. We're so happy that you're here. Well, it's a, it's a treat. I've always wanted to know how to make a whiskey sour. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm glad that, you know, Jillian was able to deliver. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you for joining Patricia. All right. All right. Okay. Well, if we have no more questions about the tea at the moment, I will move on to our final cocktail, which is the gold rush. This one is... I'm so sorry to interrupt you again. I think there's people on here from Dublin. Uh, Lucy is in Dublin. And Brian is in Cork, too. This is crazy. I love that. I love that we're getting all these uh, international participants. I know Brian. Brian's my brother. And that's oh, my sister-in-law. <laughs> but I don't know the others. <laughs> that I know of. I might know you guys. You already spotlighted them. But let's, I mean, let's do it again. Hi, Brian. Hey, hey guys. How are you guys doing? Good. We're Great. enjoying this. Really tasty cocktail, actually. I know yours looks delicious. It's pretty delicious. Yeah, yeah. We weren't prepared with the ingredients. So we were kind of running around making it while you guys were calling them out. That's okay. That's how life is sometimes. You know, you just got to make it happen. Is this we're really enjoying it. Thanks, guys. Class? Is this the first virtual class you ever saw your sister participate in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> enjoying it because it's late in the evening here too, you know? Right, so it's like nightcap time. It's, it's exactly. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It's midnight there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks Woo. for staying awake for us. <laughs> All right, we'll take you off for now, but we might come back to you later just because it's fun. All right. Okay. So final drink is going to be a gold rush. Again, we're going to ice our glass for the gold rush. I'm going to use a coupe glass, which is this kind of glass here. You can use whatever you like. I just like the smaller glass for this particular cocktail. Um, and we're going to ice the glass so that it's nice and cold. The ingredients for this one, before I get started making it, we're going to need the Tullamore Dew, lemon syrup, which is equal parts lemon and water, um, and just, or sorry, excuse me, honey syrup, calling it all the wrong thing. So equal parts honey and water and lemon juice. So to recap, Tullamore Dew, lemon juice and honey syrup. And the honey syrup is just equal parts honey and water. I'm just gonna run and rinse my shaker and I'll leave you guys get prepared for that one. Thankfully I have like three shakers. I don't know about everybody else, but. <laughs> I heard you saying that I only have two shakers, <laughs> which is so embarrassing. This is my profession and I've only got two, but I didn't foresee myself being stuck in the house. I got lots to order two more. All right, if we're ready to go, we'll make the gold rush final cocktail of the evening. Um, you guys had um, a scotch training on here last week, right? A scotch cocktail session. Monkey shoulder? We did. We did. Um, we had monkey shoulder and we did, I think we did a version of a, a whiskey sour as well or a scotch sour. And then um, he actually made this awesome, instead of using rum, he made like a pina colada with scotch and it was actually really good. Nice. Nice. Yeah, there's fierce rivalry always between the scotch whiskey fanatics and the Irish whiskey fanatics. So I was wondering if I had any major Scotch fans on here. <laughs> no, to be, to be serious, they're both delicious liquids. Um, I'll touch on that really, really briefly because people often ask me the differences between Scotch whiskey and Irish whiskey. 
They're quite similar. Um, few key differences. They both need to be matured for three years, uh, minimum. Irish whiskey is typically matured for three years in one day because we like to make things a little bit trickier for ourselves. Um, Irish whiskey is typically not peated. Now there are a couple of Irish whiskeys that are peated. For example, Connemara would be a peated style of Irish whiskey. But for the most part, Irish whiskey isn't peated, so it's not smoky at all, um, which is why it's great for beginners or people who aren't as familiar with whiskey. Irish whiskey is a great introductory spirit. Um, as well, Scotch is typically tippled, uh, sorry, double distilled, and Irish whiskey is almost always triple distilled. So some differences there before we get into the cocktail making, because I often get asked those. But it's just, it's personal preference, whatever you like yourself. All right, we'll make the gold rush. So I'm gonna put two ounces of Tullamore Dew into my ice filled shaker. I've got my uh, ice glass filling with ice here as well. I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, 0.75 honey syrup. Again, that was just equal parts honey and water. And you can play around with this one. Um, I had a lovely honey or orange blossom honey in my cupboard and I made one of these last weekend with it. I made a honey blossom syrup and it was really, really nice. You can play around. All right, scooting this in. So to recap, two ounces of tolly, three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup. And the last ingredient is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. It's just a three step cocktail. It is so easy and it tastes really good. Into your ice filled shaker and we're gonna do my favorite part, which is the shaking. So once your shaker is cold, you can stop shaking. <laughs> Julian, what was the, the uh, lemon amount? Sorry, I'm behind. <laughs> um, three quarters of an ounce. So it was three quarters of an ounce of lemon and three quarters of an ounce of uh, um, honey syrup as well. Got it. Okay, so if you've got that shaken, I'm gonna dump out the ice that was in the glass. <laughs> And I'm gonna pour this one neat. No ice in here. So the more you shake as well, the more dilution you're gonna get. The ice is gonna to begin to melt in your drink. So if you ever do pour something out and it's a little strong for you, by all means, pour it back in and shake it for a little bit longer. And again, I'm gonna give this one a lemon twist because I just think it really elevates your cocktail and makes it look that much nicer. Julian, how much shake is enough shake? I feel like I haven't really been getting that much exercise and like the, these uh, cocktail classes are the only. <laughs> I love that, your biceps are getting a good workout. Um, what you're doing when you're shaking is you're getting the liquid from one end of the cocktail shaker right back down and you're mixing it around with the ice. So we wanna make sure that we're giving it ample time in there. Um, and it's one of my pet peeves when I go into a bar and they shake it for two seconds. There's no point in shaking it. You wanna give it a good, good shake and you wanna make sure that your hand is cold. You wanna see this kind of the icy, the residue on the outside of your shaker. Exactly, yours is cold, you've done it well, you've shaken it properly. Um, and for things like whiskey sours, that's gonna need a good, good shake because we are cooking that egg. But, yeah, you want to give it a good mix. And it's fun to shake. See what your shake face is. Mine's not good. <laughs> <laughs> the shake face. All right. So again, I peeled off some lemon. I've trimmed the sides, so I've made it a square because I think it looks nicer. Again, I've kept the pith in the middle, a little bit of it. And I'm going to do that trick again. I'm going to do the waft. So I'm going to pinch the lemon in half, and I'm going to waft it over. And your kitchen or wherever you are right now is going to start smelling really nice. Again, I'm going to take both sides and give it a twist around just to make it pretty, presentable. And I'm going to rest that on the side. 
So cheers, if anybody has one ready. Blancha, cheers. Mine looks a lot darker than yours. You know what, it's actually not. I think it's my overhead lighting here. It's quite similar. Oh my God, this is delicious. It's good. And there's only three ingredients in there. It's the most simple cocktail. Mm. And also, I think I used, I didn't, I wasn't, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't organized enough. I think I used a darker honey. You could have done, yeah, mine was quite light. You can have fun with it though. Use whichever honey you have and play around with those flavors. Um, I also used, I didn't have any white sugar, so I made my simple syrup with cane sugar, so it's a little bit darker as well. You can see that one. So, slauncha guys, cheers to our final cocktail. I've got three in front of me to enjoy. Slauncha, so to good health. Slauncha. Um, okay, I have a question for you about syrup. So, um, what, like, when, like, there's so many kinds of sugar out there cane sugar, uh, casting sugar, demamara, like does it matter like what you use for each drink or do you like to use consistently the same sugar? It is going to affect the taste of your drink. You are going to make a different product when you're making simples with different sweeteners. Um, but I, I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. A lot of it's personal preference um, and the other part would be come down to what you're making. So if I was making an Irish coffee, for example, I would only ever use demerara, dark, dark brown sugar. Um, but I would never make syrup out of that for a light, bright drink. It's also going to affect how it looks. And as we mentioned, people do drink with their eyes first, you know. So we want to make sure that every cocktail we're making is consistent. And for this one, I wanted a light cocktail. I want it to look golden in color. So I'm not going to use a brown sugar for my simple here. All right, who haven't we seen? See, Seneca, did you make some drinks? Do you want, oh, okay, we're going to take, we're going to spotlight you. Hold on. I can't spotlight Samantha anymore because they were like making out. <laughs> that looks that wonderful. Looks like you like it? I love it. Oh, there we go. Sorry, do you like it? I love it, yes. I like it. Um, it's not, I, I thought this would be a lot sweeter. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, they're, they both look gorgeous. I thought it would be really sweet, but it's really not. Like the, the syrup, um, the honey doesn't really give it as much sweetness as I thought it would. Um, so I, I really do like it. I like it too. I like them all. Awesome. Love it. And then um, Timothy has a question about a syrup for someone who has insulin issues. You, would you recommend anything for that? Is that something you can speak to? Um, you know, I don't have an example off top. I wouldn't be confident giving you an answer, but I would say to look into making syrups with different types of sweeteners. So look into using maple syrups, agaves, things like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but there's a numerous different ways you can make syrups. So I definitely have a little look online for that. And I'll do my research for next time. I'll know the answer. <laughs> well, I've got someone, uh, Cathal, already gave great advice. Skip the syrup and double the Telemore do. <laughs> I'm all down for that, if that's what you like to drink. <laughs> and then, Samantha, I, this actually happened to me, too. Uh, the honey kept clumping up. So what, how do we prevent that? Are we supposed to, should we have mixed the honey and the simple syrup prior so it kind of, like, heat it all together to get it more fluid? Um, you're probably heating it too much, I would say. I don't know, if maybe if you put it over the stove, it would clump up. I usually just use water for my kettle. So I put bo boiling water on top of my honey and I stir it around oh, nice okay. and quick. I did it um, straight from the jar. So I think that yeah, was- Yeah, maybe you're heating it a little bit too much. It could be the type of honey as well. I use runny honey. Okay. I use like a really thick honey. And it got clumpy. Yeah. Again, if you're shaking, so if you've noticed that, give it a little bit extra shake and give it a chance to dissipate in the shaker. Great advice. Um, and then the syrup, I'm assuming the simple syrup, are you keeping the syrup in the fridge and how long does it stay? Yeah, you can keep it in the fridge. Um, it's just sugar and water, so I would say a shelf life of a couple of weeks. Stick it in the back of your fridge. Like a squeeze bottle and then I'll put like maybe a little wrap on top, but I'll, it'll, it will stay for weeks. Exactly. I have this one here that I got on Amazon, which well, is just like a few days because that's how many drinks I'm making. I'm teasing. <laughs> that's, that, a nice yeah. that's a nice one. That jar. That bottle. Yeah, I just got these. These were super cheap. I got them on Amazon, but um, I feel like I'm in a bar when I have one. So <laughs> and these <laughs> jam jars for storage. Oh, good. Look at you. you see them. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think this was great. I, I love, um, I know we talked yesterday, Jillian, but I think it's cool. 
Um, you know, when you like a spirit, like uh, tell them or do, and you can actually like use things from your pantry. I mean, I made a joke to my husband, like when this uh, shelter in place is over, every like, I feel we have like 50 kinds of salt in the house. I'm like, I'm not buying salt until like all the salt is done. But I feel that way about honey, jam. Um, I mean, there's so many cool ingredients and spices we probably all have at home. And this is a good way to rotate through it. Yeah, definitely. And I did love that question about the sweeteners as well, because look in your pantry and anything that's sweet, we can make a syrup out of that. Add in water, play around, have a mix and see what it tastes like. And there's no wrong way to do it. And we are all home bartenders, so I'm sure we'll all love it. And if all else fails, just stick the whiskey on top of the whites. That's always good. Oh, <laughs> it is easy um, to sip as well as to mix. I mean, I feel this is very mixable, but it also... Um, is something you could just stand, it's a standalone uh, for those who like to drink like just whiskey. Whiskey neat, yeah. I would say a good 80% of Tullamore Mordew is consumed um, neat or on the rocks, but I do love to show people the versatility of it. It stands up really well in a cocktail and it's so smooth that it's not going to jump out and punch you in the face. Easy to drink. Yeah, delicious. Well, there's one uh, tip I wanted to give everyone because we talked about it in some of the other classes, but at Mariano's, we juice all of our own juices. So we, I'm sure a lot of you know who live here, we do fresh orange juice, but we also do lemon and lime. And I use, I'll buy them a lot. And sometimes I'll, you know, pour some out of the container and freeze it. So I have it on hand, but it, it takes the, uh, the work out of juicing it yourself. That's great. Now, yeah, lemon and lime juice freezes beautifully in the freezer. So that's perfect. Just take out a little bit. If you know it's Friday night and you're going to be making a couple of cocktails, take it out that morning and you've got perfect juice. Yeah, I do like to... The, another reason I recommend the fresh juices is because it alters the ratio. The bottle and um, the non-fresh pressed juices, the ones that are shelf stable, they are a lot tangier, a lot more tart, and it's going to affect the ratio of your cocktail. So if you are using that, you might want to dial off the simple syrup or the sweetener that you're using just to make sure that the balance remains remains tasty and good. Awesome. Well, uh, how's everybody doing out there in uh, cocktail land? Everybody's good. It looks like it. I love, oh, I see um, Victoria's dog is enjoying the cocktails, it looks like. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, I want to thank everyone for being here. This is, this is great. And I just like a last call for questions for Jillian, if anyone has any. Lucy, thanks for the nice comment. Everyone, thanks for all the nice comments. It's fun to see everyone here like celebrating and um, you know doing what we're, what we're supposed to be. Oh, I see another dog. This is <laughs> um, it's great to see every, all of us doing what we're supposed to be doing and learning new stuff. So I feel like I've learned a lot since we started the series um, a few weeks ago. I've made carbonara, I've made rice balls, I've made whiskey sours, I've learned all these great drinks. So um, it's a lot of fun for all of us. And thanks to Sarah for keeping it, us all together. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, all right, I don't know if we have any more questions, but thank you, Kathy. Thank you to the McKeans, our regular, our regular guests. A big thanks to you, Jillian. People are saying thank you and cheers. So uh, we have, uh, tomorrow night is Friday. We have live at Mariano's on our Facebook Live page or Facebook, it'll be Facebook Live. And then Saturday, if you have kids, we have kids concerts at 10 a.m. And then next week we start all over again. And uh, we have Todd Stein doing some spring vegetable recipes on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday is actually gonna be really fun. We're doing a class on snacks that pair with wine. So Cheetos, um, oh my gosh, sorry, I'm forgetting the rest of them. Cheetos, pretzel crisps, and our Mario popcorn. popcorn and what they pair with. So Sarah has those listed out. And then uh, Thursday we're back with Hendrix Gin doing some cocktails. So we have a fun week ahead. Um, and Jillian, we really appreciate you. Hopefully we'll see you soon in Chicago. Of course, thank you guys all for tuning in. Appreciate uh, it. Kristen, we are actually, it's so funny, we are gonna do a Meatless Monday. We're gonna do um, a book signing with a local uh, author, I guess. I mean, it's her first book. But she's gonna do um, some vegetarian classes for uh, teens, actually. And then Beyond Meat's also gonna do some events with us as well. So look forward to those. And actually, Todd's recipes on Tuesday are meatless. He's doing um, a pasta with asparagus and some other vegetables, and he's doing stuffed artichokes, which is like my favorite thing of all time. Um, so we're excited about that. So yeah, Meatless Monday's coming up. And Tuesday next week is meatless, so. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, Kirsten. See you guys next time. Okay. Cheers, Sancha. Sancha.